Okay, let's talk about media queries. This is something that was introduced with CSS3, and it allows us to have our page react to things like the browser width, the browser height, the aspect ratio of the page. So all kinds of information we can use about what kind of device is rendering our web page to decide how we want to create our layout. In fact, how we can change any style property. So I have a pretty basic page here. I've got a nav area with four links. I've got a main area that's got a heading and four paragraphs. There we are. The CSS that I'm using is pretty straightforward. Um, by default, I'm stripping out all the padding and margin so that I can decide where I want to add it. I've got a default uh, bunch of font properties. My nav element, I've got padding on the top and bottom of the nav element. Uh, nothing on the left and right. Uh, I do have margin of 3 REM, so the edge of my nav area lines up here with the edge of where this text is. My anchors, I made them block and float, so they line up nicely across here. They've each got 25% of the width because there's four of them. My main element, um, the padding and margin together on the uh, side here add up to, line it up to the same point. And then my paragraphs, I just add a little bit of padding in between them. So that's all the basic styles. Now what I want to do is I want to make this page react to situations like this, where I've got the page gets quite wide, and these lines of text become really sort of ridiculously long looking, difficult to read long lines like that. Um, I want to also react to situations where I've got things like this. I don't want my links pressed together like this. I want to bump up my font size a little bit because somebody with a screen this wide, chances are good they're going to be using a mobile device. So we want to bump up the font size, make it a little bit easier for them to read. So how do we do this? Okay, let's put it back to our default. Now, inside of our CSS, normally this is going to be in an external CSS file. And then we add this, at media, with a set of parentheses, and we can add as many of these as we want. So I could have a whole bunch of these at media selectors or at media rules. Inside of the parentheses here, I write the conditions that I want to use to determine what CSS is going to go inside here. So it's like this is a brand new CSS page inside of here, and this is a brand new CSS page. All of the CSS of the top here, all of this is being applied regardless. So these are my defaults. This is what happens regardless of what's being rendered, what size the browser is. He, these are my special situations. So this is the CSS that will override these properties. So we can do things like this. I can say I want uh, max width to be 600 pixels, something like that. My CSS that's going to change well, let's do something with the links first of all. If I get down to a small size, I want the links to be stacked vertically. So we'll do this. I'll say nav A, and what properties do I have now? Display block, sure I'll leave that. Float left, don't need that anymore. Um, width, I'm gonna change that. So let's set float to none, and we'll set width to 100%. We'll bump up the font weight. Let's make that 900. We'll bump up the font size a little bit too. Let's put it up to uh, two REMs. And maybe I will uh, increase the letter spacing. Space out the individual letters a little bit more. So we'll just add two pixels of letter spacing. Okay, saved. Nothing has happened over here. But if we go and we adjust this down to a smaller size, hey, there we go. Now my links are much bigger. The text size has increased. We can toggle back and forth between them and see the font size increased, the boldness increased. They stacked vertically. So that's much more friendly for a mobile environment. Now I can put more than one thing. This is just one selector with one CSS um, set of properties. I can also target the paragraphs, like this. I could target that heading that's inside of there. So we could bump up the font size on the heading. Let's make it 2REM, or 3REM even. There we go, bump it up really big. 
for the paragraphs font size to make that work yeah we should increase that because we were working with 1.0 that's quite tiny especially relative to these other sizes so let's go up to say 1.6 rem much better uh, line height if we want we could bump it up a little bit it's 1.5 is the default that we're using right now set on the html element so let's bring that up just slightly 1.6 and then padding instead of 0.5 rem on the top and bottom of each paragraph i'm going to bump that up and say 0.8 rem and then leave it at zero on the left and right there we go now there is a lot of extra space here on the sides maybe we want to spread this out a little bit too so we could decrease the amount of margin that we have go to the main element and we can say margin same as before zero on the top and bottom but on the left and right let's go down to one instead of two rem or we could even say 0 0.5 spreads it out a little bit better so you can see now we've built something that's a lot more user friendly for the smaller screen sizes but we haven't done anything that's going to impede the way it worked at the normal range okay so now let's deal with a situation where we were looking at the much larger screen size like this i want to change the font size make it more friendly maybe divide this content up into two columns so inside of our media query here we can use min width instead of max width we're saying okay here's the minimum size to apply this for let's go up to 1150 pixels we'll say all right so inside of here my paragraphs i'm going to change my font size i will bump it up again maybe i'm going to use the same size i was using for the paragraphs in the mobile size so 1.6 rem <coughs> pardon me makes it much more readable at this size and we're going to say column column count is going to be two and our column gap the space between the two columns let's set that to four rem there we are so we're creating columns inside of the content here now these paragraphs are quite short but we can uh, adjust that as well my heading looks kind of small now because we've bumped up the size of the paragraphs. So come back in here and my H2 inside of main, and yeah, we should put the main selector in front of there as well. And our font size, we want it to be relative. We've bumped it up again. So just use the same as the mobiles, mobile size. There we go. And we can bump up the font size for the links as well. But you get, you can see where we're going here. We are creating conditions where we want to change things. And I don't have to put every single CSS property inside of here, just the ones that I want to target, just the ones that I want to specifically change when I reach this minimum width. So 1150 or anything bigger, that's where this change takes place. Once I get below that, I no longer have those same properties. There we are, back down to the original size. We shrink it down, and there we have the more mobile approach. And that's media queries. So I will be making other videos in the future about this. I will be talking about properties beyond just dealing with the widths. But for now, this is more than enough to get you started. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.